Hey everybody, Jeremy and Jimmy, we're here in the carcass shop today. We're standing in front of the 72 Road Course Camaro. And when we constructed these carbon fiber panels, you guys had a ton of questions for us, and today we have some answers. And if you guys have any other questions on other topics, you can go ahead and leave those in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Let's get into it. So if you guys have been following along with our 72 Road Course Camaro build, you would have seen quite a few composites projects that we've done on it, including some carbon fiber and fiberglass stuff, depending on what we were doing. And really the first question is, what method are you gonna to use to make the panel in question? There are several to do. Some of them are much less complicated, some are more complicated, but the ones that we used, basically two different methods, was a wet layup method, where you use carbon fiber fabric or fiberglass over the original part, and we use that to skin our doors. And then the other method is a mold method where you actually have to create a mold first and then you do a wet layup back inside the mold, which gives you a better surface finish. And really the only two differences between those processes is how much work you do at the beginning versus the end. They are still both a wet layup process. So you're gonna have some imperfections naturally, but it just kind of depends where you wanna spend most of your time. There are more advanced methods out there, including vacuum bagging techniques and resin infusion, which tend to be a little more pricey. You do get a much better product, but we feel like for what our car was and being more of the DIY nature, the wet layup process suited it quite a bit better. Now we did actually both methods. We did an earlier style of this when we did the trailblazer hood, right? Yeah. Basically we laid the carbon over the top of the hood and then you just put a bunch of epoxy over the top. Yep. So we squeegeed it out and just kind of hoped for the best finish. Mm -hmm. From there though, since it was that kind of over the top layup, we had to do a lot of sanding, uh, clear coat the top of it to give it the UV protections. If you are starting a project like this, what materials do you need? And that again comes down to what do you want to choose for your composite panel? Fiberglass or carbon fiber is appropriate depending on what you want. Carbon fiber of course has the look that everyone wants, but it's quite a bit more expensive anywhere from three to six times more expensive just for the fabric itself. But some general consumable items you might need, cups, stir sticks, gloves, brushes and paddles and uh, rollers to try to get some air bubbles out. A lot of supplies that you would need if you were trying to paint a car or something. A lot of crossover right. there for and, PPE and everything like that. And that holds true for both sides. If you're doing fiberglass, you use the same stuff. If you're using carbon fiber, it's still yeah. the same stuff. Epoxy and all that. Right, exactly. Yeah. Common issues, that's a big one that we get questions on. That's actually stuff we run into. Like yep. we we try this stuff for the first time or second or third time, you always seem to run into something different. So common issues that we seem to run into or that you may run into when you're either trying to do carbon or fiberglass. Um, you know, we just talked about some of the materials or tools, I guess, that we need. Uh, big thing is getting the air bubbles out of them. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can buy rollers like these. Uh, this kind of helps. These gets you in the nooks and crannies. And these cool little rollers here, it's just a piece of aluminum kind of milled with a bunch of different like slots and stuff in it. You can roll the panel out, uh, roll on top of the carbon and try to mm -hmm. force that air or if you're trapped air bubbles underneath the carbon and then the layer of your epoxy that's going down, kind of force all that out so you can get, especially if you're doing the um, not wet layup, like the over the top layup. So we're using the reverse mold. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something like that, you want that first layer finish to be as slick as possible. That's the ultimate goal there. Mm -hmm. So to get everything or that first layer laid down really well is kind of key to having it come out of the mold as nice as possible and it just saves you time, right? Yeah, yeah and that's another thing. The, the more time you spend <clears throat> in preparation and taking your time to make sure on a mold getting that first layer correct, the less work there is gonna be later on. That's a huge thing. Let's go over if we have, you know, carbon fiber, you have fiberglass, how many layers are we doing there? How many layers are we doing here? Can you miss, mix and match? How does that all work? Yeah, so um, again, carbon fiber, much more expensive than fiberglass. So fiberglass is a great kind of segue into composites if you haven't done it before, just because inevitably you're gonna mess up. We've done it plenty of times. Right. We've junked entire panels doing this stuff and fiberglass doesn't really hurt in any way to throw away. It's just kind of there for you to learn and try yeah. stuff on. As far as layers go, I'd say minimum three for any type of panel. If you don't have some kind of 3D structure with it, it's better to have some thicker, um, just the panel being thicker itself, just so it adds some rigidity. 
although most panels will need some kind of structure to give them shape. You can use fiberglass underneath carbon fiber for an aesthetic application. I know in the industry, a lot of people sell parts that they list as carbon fiber when really it's a mix of carbon fiber and fiberglass, which is totally okay. Marketing it as a carbon fiber part, not okay if it has fiberglass <laughs> in it. But um, again, if you're only going for the carbon fiber look, there's no reason why you shouldn't use uh, fiberglass for every layer underneath. I think it comes down to cost of materials, what you want it to look like when you're done, right? If you're trying to do a set of smaller flares, just this is your first try at it, you know, it's okay to do your first layer of carbon and then back everything up with fiberglass. We've done that. It works just fine. And to Jimmy's point too, strength is a big thing. If you have smaller parts and pieces, you may get away with not doing so many layers. But if you're dealing with the hood, if you're dealing with the deck lid, you may want to go at least three, if not four, or whatever you choose for the thickness and just really the rigidity of the part or piece that you're looking for. Yeah. So, Another side of this too is if you are building structural components, that's a whole different world where generally speaking, fiberglass and carbon fiber do not mix just because the mechanical properties are quite a bit different. So um, usually you have to have a homogenous uh, you know, whatever part that is made of the same material for that to work out. You've done a little bit of this actually outside of the shop. Um, you've done like, I don't know if it's called compression molds or whatever, you've mm -hmm. made brake pedal pads and stuff like that, which is a completely different animal. Uh, there's forged carbon fiber as well, which is what you're referring to. Right. Composites are really strong. I don't think people quite realize how strong they can be. Um, like even body panels on cars, like they can take quite a beating before they actually right. break. So um, hence why race cars and stuff use them. It's lightweight, of course. And when it comes down to it, if you're doing this in our case, it is a race car. Mm -hmm. There's a strong chance they're gonna get nicked. They're gonna possibly get beat up. Mm -hmm. So they are consider a, considered a consumable product, just like your splitters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff happens to them. You yep. just have to be prepared to redo it again. So. I mean, to that point, you guys might want to try all this in fiberglass first. Mm -hmm. And once you get either good at it or you become a better driver, mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, move on to your carbon fiber. But there is something to be said about temperatures and um, your working temperatures inside of wherever you are and your ambient temperature outside and moisture levels and stuff like that. That can really kind of play with how everything sets up. Yeah, so uh, generally speaking, um, if it's a colder environment, you're gonna want an epoxy that sets faster, uh, just because the temperature can either slow things down or speed things up. So, or if you've got a 100 degree day and your shop environment is 100 degrees, it's you're gonna good. want an epoxy that's a little bit slower, gives yeah. you more working time to get all the epoxy, all your layers down and everything like that. Um, and the humidity can change things a little bit. Um, we're not experienced enough to really know exactly what happens, but, um, of course, there's companies out there that run production parts, and I'm sure they've got a really, um, you know, fine touch on everything, just depending on what the weather conditions are. And with that too, wherever you guys get your epoxies from, wherever you get your materials from, you can ask those people, those manufacturers, you know, I'm looking at doing this, it's gonna be a 75 or 85 degree day somewhere, usually within a 10 degree swing. It's kind of the same when you do your paint work. They're gonna help you find the right um, hardeners or catalyst to put in your epoxy so it can either set up fast or slow. Um, that kind of gets brought up a lot in the paint world if you have a fast or a slow reducer or epoxy or, hard or hardener or catalyst. Um, it's the same thing with this. It's just a, basically a chemical reaction that's making mm -hmm. something happen and when it's really hot outside you want to slow that down. When it's really cold outside you want to speed that up. So. Um, if you guys know a little bit about painting, these kind of go hand in hand, it's just by, you know, what it takes to do the mixes and stuff like that to get ready to lay everything out. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, you know, all the layers and stuff with the carbon fiber and when it comes out of the mold, it's finished, but it's not completely finished. You know, it's going to withstand impact and stuff like that, but UV is a huge factor in this and how it would almost break down that epoxy over the top of the piece that you're dealing with, so you have to finish it somehow, right? Yeah, exactly. So when you have your panels done, generally you're gonna go over it with an automotive grade clear coat. Otherwise you can get some discoloration in the panel, which we don't really want, especially if you are having a raw carbon look. 
Um, if you are gonna wrap the car or the panel, whatever it is, then it doesn't really matter because the wrap can kind of take care of it. Right. Um, and going back to the fiberglass versus carbon fiber too, if you are gonna wrap or paint your vehicle, then fiberglass, I would say, is the way to go just because it's cheap and it's gonna get covered anyway. Right, and just like all those guys in the drift cars and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that's not uh, carbon anyways. Most of that's fiberglass because it gets beat up. Yeah, yeah they, they break it every that's time the they whole point. take your car out, so. Yeah. Well, I hope that answered some of your questions. I know uh, we didn't get to everything, but we don't have all the time in the world to do this. So if you guys have any more questions, go ahead and send them off to us. We'll try to do our best to answer those and uh, see if we can help out in any way. Yeah, and be sure to check out the episodes out on our Road Course Camaro if you haven't already. There's a lot more detail in there where we go over more of the composite process. But in the meantime, we have a lot more work to do. So we'll see you guys later.